interesting because uh well, it's interesting that, you know, emotion is starting to creep in, you know, because, yes. you know, you know, well, Howard Gardner at, at Harvard started talking about multiple intelligences. And yeah. then, you know, then when emotional intelligence became kind of a concept back in the uh, in the 90s, and it, it feels like about 10 books come out a month about emotional intelligence. Um, and so I'm hoping that this concept of story intelligence, which is really what you're talking about is the symbolic yeah. frame, yeah. is that this concept suddenly can take hold is that this is really the core of who we are as humans <laughs> this is this is core and if we yeah, understand that yeah lee, lee bowman and i wrote a book uh, called lady with soul right and, remember that yeah what we're trying to do in that book is get people to get in touch with deep down um and you know you, you can't buy a soul <laughs> And you can't install one. It's got to come from that epicenter someplace underneath the veneer of rationality. Right. I was, I was at uh, uh, Annapolis and there was, uh, what was his name? Stockdale, remember him? Uh, uh, he was a general. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, I gave a speech and he gets up afterwards. He said, you know, uh, this deal guy, uh, I thought at first he was out of his mind, but all of a sudden I started thinking about how we in the prison, in the POW camp, how we made things come together and we told stories by tapping against the wall. Wow. And we had a code. And he said that was what got people through. Yeah. You know, I think without a story, you know, even in the most adverse circumstances, if you have a story, that can carry you. Yep. And uh, and but without a story, we're lost. Yeah, and, and, and I I I'm kind of uh, guided in my own life uh, by a story. It was a story that my father told me that he said. Uh, <clears throat> He had this kid who was uh, one uh, 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 one arm only. The kid who had an accident, got in, got in trouble. So, <clears throat> excuse me, my boy. Um, so he said, I, I taught the, the kid how to play baseball with one arm. And he went on to, to the majors. And he said, hey, you know, the, the kid, called me the other day. He's all grown up. And uh, he, said, he said he'd like to take uh, uh, your mom and I to dinner. And so he, uh, time came and up came a limousine. And my father never seen a car that big, you know. Dorothy, it's a mafia, you know, run for <laughs> your life. Um, and he said, and then the kid, uh, after dinner, I said, Mr. Deal, you know something? I've been waiting 20 years to do this for you. And so you, you see, what, what that does to me, it says what you do as a teacher is you change the life's trajectory of a lot of people. It's, you see, it's that one story that if I ever... I uh, got worried about how I was doing or things like that. Well, I could always fall back on that story. Yeah, it's a, it's very interesting. Um, you know, there's a couple uh, researchers here at Emory that I've also interviewed for the show, uh, Robin Fibush and Marshall Duke, who've been looking at family stories for year in for for thirty years now. And 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 I, you know, we're born into a story that's already running. And, uh, and, and it's the stories we hear from our family that give us our sense of self and their sense of resilience. Uh, yes. and, and that sounds like that story for you is it's been a touchstone for you in your, in your life because you, you started your career out as a teacher, right? In I, I, I started my year out uh, my, uh, as a cop. As a cop, right? Okay. <laughs> now, that, that, now that I, I say that, it reminds me of um, we have uh, 
a, uh, a, a, a department, we have the, uh, the Chuck Huck Award that was given each year to the policeman who had screwed up the, the most. <laughs> now, I, I won it twice. <laughs> and the, uh, here was what, what the story was about. I arrived at a break-in in a dentist, dentist office. What do you worry about? Drugs. Oh, right. Uh, drugs equal dead cops is what it is. So I, I drew my weapon and climbed through the, the glass and parted enough that I could, uh, I could uh, uh, get through it. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm ready to go. And uh, all of a sudden I kicked open the door and there was a man with a gun on me. Now, let me tell you what you do in a situation like that. You wet your pants and you start to hyperventilate. <laughs> and so I'm, as I'm hyperventilating, I'm saying, wow, uh, uh, he looks a lot like me. Uh, that's a mirror. So you <laughs> imagine that the sergeant coming in, here's a patrolman deal with a gun on his, his, uh, the mirror and he wet his pants. But now that story you see carries some real values about valor you went in there and restraint see as those those two values you don't want to shoot someone if you're a cop i'll tell you that right now yeah the last thing you want to do is to do, do that uh, so that was a Chuck Huck Award. And that was, uh, <laughs> I, I think that uh, I became a teacher, but I learned a lot about storytelling as a teacher. You're, you can't tell a good story. You ain't teaching. Well, yeah, and you're going to lose them fast. Yeah. Pardon? You will lose them fast. They won't stick yeah. with you very well. Oh, long. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Let's turn let's turn our attention to, to the educational world for a moment. And um, right now, a lot of people would say education is pretty broken. And obviously, with the pandemic, it's 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 exposed. I think a lot of the the fault lines that were already there. Um, what's your vision for uh, for the future of education, and, and maybe what role could story play in that? Uh, if you look at it through the lens, one of the frames, like the symbolic frame. There's, there's where you see schools have, have, they've sold their soul in many respects because they've become so infatuated with test scores and that quantitative way to, to gain knowledge. And that just isn't going to work. It has never worked. And, but if people keep trying it, even though they, don't, they, they, they have evidence that it's not working, yeah. but they don't see that evidence. And that's why the story can uh, really help is to get uh, uh, people to the point that they, uh, they, they're into their education. Um, I, I thank God for this. I was at Vanderbilt. I, I got the, the uh, award for uh, the, the teacher of the year, professor of the year, uh, which to me is like the Medal of Honor. And the reason I got that is because my classes were, they, people would say, well, it's like a zoo there. And I said, well, who, who got the award? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Because education has got to be restarting, mm -hmm. and it's those, it's the back to that one school district, the pits and the berries. You take some time. I mean, if schools uh, don't recognize their cooties, I don't. I, I you can't even begin. There's, there's no way that you can. Uh, and so what we've done is we keep trying and trying and trying and trying. But as we try, 
uh, we still don't make any any headway. Remember No Child Left Behind? Sure. Uh, I call it No Behind Left because that testing craze, and it didn't work after all that money, billions of dollars. And yet they would just step back and think about, well, what happens if you begin to have teachers who understand myth and ritual and uh, they, they uh, are, uh, uh, well, I, I just thought of something. Uh, I, I taught that class with fiction at the University of Laverne, my alma mater. And uh, the first thing we did in the class, we asked those students, there were about 25 of them, to come to class prepared to tell their story. Mm. What happened then was that all of a sudden people are laughing, they're crying, and it, it brought to the fore uh, all that uh, stuff that no one ever deals with. But it, it, it was a life changing experience for me. The, one of the, one of the, I, the president taught the course with me and uh, came to the one lady at the last who said, um, I have no soul. I have no story. I said, well, don't you, do you, uh, do you smoke, do you drink? And she says, no, no, I would never do that. And I said, well, your job for your assignment for that, the next week is to come to class prepared to tell your story. And the president, I said, do something, just do something that, that will be memorable. And that, that changed that kid. And it changed, the, it fundamentally, it, it changed the class. You see, it, it, it's... Uh, yeah, um, I, I had a student when I was teaching at, at, uh, at a community college in Orlando many years ago, uh, a course on story. And he knew nothing about his story. Uh, he came from a, a broken home. His mother, I think, was working a couple of jobs. Um, he had no, no connection with any family. And I said, well, um, why don't you go see if you can find out who your people are? Who are your people? Wow. And, and uh, he had an Irish name. So, uh, you know, he, and this is really before the Internet was really. But he was able to go do some research. His, his first name was Alex also. And so he did research on the name Alexander. Obviously, uh, his namesake uh, accomplished a few things in his life. And uh, he came back and he was a changed kid. First of all, he proudly was telling me about this village where, his, where he believes his family came from. And he knew everything about the village and, and, you know, and what things were grown there and what the people were like. And uh, he found research on that. And then he started telling me stories about uh, Alexander the Great. And it changed his sense of how he comported himself. He was a different kid because he had a story now. So I think you're I think you're exactly right. Is that is that and we 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 don't we park that at the at the door. We don't let kids bring their story into the classroom. We tell them to leave their story outside the the, the school. When you're what you're saying, essentially it's the most valuable thing that we need to start with. That's right. That's right. So the thing that will work to bring something back to education has been lost is a soul. Uh, and I believe that organizations do have a soul. And um, it's a story that gets you to that level where you can connect with what makes you uh, special. Um, and I, I, you know, I, I really do get very frustrated because we just this clamp that the rational way of thinking has on teachers these days. And deep down they know that it's not working, but they keep doing it anyway, yeah. because if you can, if you can do that, um, you go along with it, you'll get, you'll get by. But you won't get ahead, you'll get by, but you won't, you won't be, uh, you won't teach, you won't be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Unless you can get in touch, and getting in touch is 
comes right back to story. Thank you.